Hello everyone. The Burning Legion has evaded Azeroth once again, and our friendly neighborhood demon Calidus, he offers warlocks three different weapons to pursuit. Knowledge, which is gained from a book called the Tome of Blighted Implements, containing information about weapons which could be used against the Legion. In this case, we're going to go for the Skull of the Manari, perfect for the demonology warlock. From the book, we learn that it's very powerful and is held by an even more powerful Dreadlord, but there is a weakness. The Skull has a will of its own, so if we can commune with the Skull, we might be able to convince it to serve us instead. We will need some reagents from Dalaran to perform the ritual and commune with it, so in the city we pick up some grave dust from a freshly dug grave, a can of overheated oil from the engineering shop, an aged snow plum brandy from the lounge which a drunken mage is not so happy about, but then again who cares about mages, and we collect a stag blood sample from a stag found within the magical menagerie. It's up to us to decide if we obtain it with dark magic or carefully take a small blood sample. Either way, we collect everything that Calidus needs for his ritual. <laughs> Calidus found a perfect spot for the ritual. Come, friend, meet Calidus in the room behind the curtains at the place called the Violet Gate. Now what? Uh, one day I will free myself of your control and... Wait, you're not my master. The Skull must be convinced that it is in his best interest to be in our possession, since forcing it into servitude would make it far weaker. Easier said than done though, since the Skull at first is not convinced. Ha! Huh. Do you think you are the first creature from a doomed world to beg for my aid? No, you will burn before the Legion's power, and I'll continue to suffer in servitude to these mongrels for the rest of eternity. Save yourself the wasted effort and go jump into a fire! So the famed Halkiel chose to submit to the demons in the end. How dare you! If my powers were not constantly being drained, I could easily bring them under my control. Then allow us to free you, Talkiel, and together, the Burning Legion will bow down to us. We will be the masters. Be <laughs> fine, then. Come to Fell Soul Hold, if you truly believe you can free me. But if you're not up for the challenge, you'll be joining me in eternal torment. Calidus knows where that is! The Calidus can help! Calidus makes us a gateway to Felsal Hold, but many demons stand in our way, and the current owner of the skull, the Dreadlord Mephistroph, he is not too happy with us trying to steal his treasure. So as we go deeper down into Felsal Hold and take on anything that the Dreadlord has to throw at us, let's talk about the history behind the skull of the Manari and how it ended up being a floating skull forced to serve the Legion. A long, long time ago, before the coming of Sargeras to Argus, the Eredar Talkiel, he ushered in a golden age for his people. He was a sorcerer of unparalleled talent, and he and his Wakeners, they pushed the limits of summoning and binding magics, conjuring the arcane entities that helped build the capital's wondrous architecture. Talkiel also devised the machines that focused the world's latent arcane energy, suffusing Argus with peace, harmony, and vitality, all within awe of his abilities, including his young apprentice named Archimond. There were rumors that Archimond coveted Talkiel's power and influence, but the Eredar leader dismissed these as pure fabrication. For his apprentice, he had shown him nothing but devotion. Archimond had even gone to great lengths to commission a custom-made crown for Talkiel, taking the measurements for his head himself. Tokyo led an order of Eredar Magi called the Wakeners. These were specialists in the arts of conjuration and binding. They were renowned for their clever arcane constructs, exploring new frontiers of summoning. Yet Tokyo was never one to rest on his laurels. He thirsted for more, seeking to elevate his orders to levels undreamed of. He searched uncharted terrain. He ventured further than any Eredar had dared before. His spells plumbed the vastness of the great dark beyond, petitioning for a deeper well of power. On one day, he received an answer. <laughs> Tokyo might have been brilliant, but he was not wise. A dark presence was whispering to him, and the Eredar's mind was consumed with vision of power beyond his wildest imaginings, of ranks upon ranks of deadly servants, eager to obey his every whim. These demonic forces made Tokyo's arcane constructs look like a child's plaything. Afterwards, he would despise the arcane, his passion reserved only for fell magic. His mysterious benefactor bestowed upon him the ability to summon lesser demons, and the Eredar, he immediately spread the knowledge to his Wakeners. Imps and Fellhounds, Infernals and Abyssals, all executed the commands of Talkiel and his sorcerers. Convinced that this was the start of a new era, Talkiel fiercely prepared to present his wondrous pets to the rulers of Argus, Velen and Kil'jaeden. Brilliant, not wise. 
In the presence of Velen, Kill Jaden, and the editor's rulers in her circle, the source Atalkiel demonstrated what his fell darlings could do. First, he summoned scores of his familiar arcane constructs, and he arrayed them in orderly rows. Then, the sky went dark, and the clouds roiled as a storm of meteors crashed down. From the craters emerged an army of infernals, which Talkiel unleashed on the constructs. It was a symbolic display of the new era that he saw for his people. He watched rapturously as the demons obliterated the unfortunate arcane entities, smashing and burning them until only smoke and embers remained. Such was the demon's fury that even the nearby columns and statues, they were reduced to rubble and ash. An acceptable sacrifice on the altar of progress as far as Tokiel was concerned. But when he looked upon his colleagues' faces, he didn't see the approval he expected. Kill Jaden's expression was remote, inscrutable, but there could be no doubt about how Velen felt. He condemned Talkiel's new summonings and ordered him never to conjure them again. The following is from an account of Talkiel's last days, written by an anonymous wakener. It was recovered from Archimon's private archive. After Master Talkiel's disastrous demonstration, Velen forbade him from conjuring demons, denouncing his new era as a failed experiment. Talkiel withdrew to his chambers for weeks. He neither ate nor slept. His only companions were the demonic minions that he would summon and then banish in rage, or so we guessed. All we could hear were the shrieks of imps as they were thrust back and forth between this realm and the Twisting Nether. We also sensed the presence of other, larger entities with him. Shadow apparitions of baleful influence, though his servants swore that no no one had entered his sanctum. When finally Tokyo emerged, he was changed. He had aged by centuries, alone in the dark with his fots and his thralls. His back was now twisted and stooped, and there was an odd glimmer in his eye. He summoned his wakeners, and we answered the call, for we loved him like a father. He looked at each of us in turn, and said only, the new era begins. Tokyo commanded his Wakeners to continue their experiments in summoning fell creatures. In secret, he and his sorcerers conjured demons of increasingly dire aspect, and they cast powerful spells to hide the in cover training grounds. Shielded from the eyes of Velen and Kill Jaden, Tokyo slowly amassed a great demonic army with one single purpose to install him as a dictator of Argus. The Wakeners were united behind Tokyo, save one, his apprentice Archimond. Although he had no aversion to demons, in fact, he rather enjoyed them, Archimond was driven by ambition, and he was eager to prove himself to Velen and kill Jaden. The night before the Wakeners were to stage their coup, Archimond revealed Talkiel's plans to the rulers of the Eredar. You shall have his head for this, Archimond said. Now Velen and kill Jaden, they were stunned to learn of Talkiel's treachery. He had summoned legions of fell beasts to build his personal empire, plotting to assassinate the Eredar rulers. He had tapped into a strange new source of power whose limits were unknown, and he needed to be stopped swiftly and without mercy. To prove his loyalty to Velen and kill Jaden, Archimond broke the wards that hid where Talkiel's demonic army was marshaled, and he led a contingent of magi in storming the secret training grounds. The battle, as you might expect, did not last long. Cut off guard, the Wakeners were easily defeated by the invading magi, and without commanders to direct them, the demons were slaughtered. Archimond himself confronted his master as he was summoning reinforcements. With a single stroke of his blade, he decapitated Tokyo. After they crushed Tokyo's rebellion, the editor's rulers magi, they burned the Wakener's bodies so their fell taint would not spread, and then they destroyed the rebels' writings to suppress the knowledge of their foul arts. Archimond oversaw this effort, and when it was done, he was hailed as a hero. Soon afterwards, he commissioned one of Arcus' finest jewelers to gild Tokyo's skull. He claimed that he was preparing it for viewing as a grim warning not to follow Tokyo's path. In truth though, he had it adorned with medals that would enhance its ability to channel magical energy, the perfect decoration for the perfect source to the skull, which Archimond proudly displayed. Archimond eventually rose to lead the Eredar alongside Velen and Kill Jaden, and by all accounts, he was a wise ruler. In actuality, however, a demonic presence had been slowly infiltrating his mind, using Talkiel's skull as a conduit for its pernicious influence. While Archimond slept, he saw visions of civilizations consumed in magnificent fellfire, and a dark god standing at the head of a glorious army. The entity whispered promises of strength that were impossible for mere mortals to comprehend, and Archimond drank them in, eager to learn more of this mysterious being and his invincible legions. Thus, when the Dark Titan Sargeras finally did come to Argus and offer the Adadar place in his kingdom, Archimond was the first to accept. After he became one of the Burning Legion's generals, he put Tokyo's skull to good use. In life, Tokyo had been unmatched in his ability to control demonic minions, and his skull was no less adept. 
Gods. World after world fell before our command as he channeled his commands through the skull, compelling multitudes of demons to obey, his forces obliterating opponents with the grace and precision of an expertly choreographed ballet. Since then, possession of Tolkien's skull has been passed down between a handful of Sargeras' elite generals, with preference given to those who lead invasions of the fallen titans most sought after worlds. The Dreadlord Mephistroph, commander of the Legion Vanguard into Azeroth, he was the last to be seen with the skull. Did you think I would stand idle as you clawed your way through my minions? Listen, mortal, as the treasure you fight so hard to obtain is broken to my will! Curse you! I will not give in! And so, Tolkiel became the Skull of the Manari as we see it today, and it's kind of interesting to see that they actually gave a backstory as to how Archimonde became one of the leaders of the Eredar. Makes you wonder what Kil Jaden and Velen did to earn their spots. Regardless, we've taken on all the demonic forces that Mephistroph had to throw at us, and now all that remains is taking on the Dreadlord ourselves. I grow tired of your interference! Die! Despite the Dreadlord's power, our army of demons greatly outnumber him, and they're firmly under our control. I mean, who can stand up against mighty imps riding on Fellhounds? Not Mephistroph, that's for sure. Enjoy your victory while you can, Warlock. <laughs> this isn't over between us. It has only begun. Freedom! The feeling is sweet, but Mephistroth's magic has diminished my power. Let's depart this place before the Dreadlord is able to return. It will be up to Warlocks to get to know Tolkien better and restore him to his full potential. Like most calls, his comes with a cautionary tale. Tolkien the Denied was once a great leader of the Eredar, until he was not. Until he was nothing more than screams that echoed across Argus. A skull serving as a grim reminder of the price that you pay for dealing with the demons. Always have an escape planned. A lesson I learned the hard way. A cautionary tale indeed, one that has been heeded by none, and demonology warlocks will not be the first, as they wield its power in the war against the Legion by turning the powers of the enemy against them. And that is where we'll end the story for today. Thank you very much for watching everyone, subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya!